photosynthesis. It is the synthesis of carbohydrates in the presence of light. Chemically, we can give a simple equation where the water molecule and carbon dioxide in the presence of light react to give carbohydrates and oxygen. A water molecule is getting oxidized to oxygen whereas the carbon dioxide is getting reduced to carbohydrates. Photosynthesis can be discussed under two different headings, a light reaction and a dark reaction. In light reaction, the electromagnetic energy is trapped, whereas in the dark reaction, whatever electromagnetic energy that is trapped is used to convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates. So this, proper or this process of electromagnetic energy trapping, it occurs in some special pigments called as chlorophylls that are present in chloroplast. There are two different types of chlorophylls which we call them as a chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. These chlorophylls can strongly absorb in blue and also the red portion of the light. Since they strongly absorb in blue and red portion of the light, they reflect green color. Or we also say it in another way, since they do not absorb in the green region, therefore they reflect green. Coming to the structure of the chlorophyll, there are four important microcycles in biological systems, porphyrin, chlorine, corin, and corfin. In the case of chlorophyll, we find the microcycle to be chlorine. There are 10 double bonds that are in conjugation. But there are altogether four rings. Also, there is a fifth ring which is fused. The metal ion that is present in the core is a magnesium ion. On ring 2, there are two substitutions. When one of the substitutions is a methyl group, it is called as a chlorophyll A, whereas if the substitution is an aldehyde CHO group, then the chlorophyll is called as a B, chlorophyll B. This side chain is called as a phytyl side chain. So this is the structure for a chlorophyll A or chlorophyll B depending on the type of substitution of the R group. We are aware that whatever energy we get is from the sun. It gives a range of energy. Out of this range, the solar emission maximum where the earth can absorb the maximum energy coming from the sun is around 500 nanometer. So this is called as a solar emission maximum. If I choose any human being or an animal, the proteins which comprises of amino acids, they cannot absorb in the visible region. So, whatever sunlight that is present, this sunlight cannot be utilized to produce the food material or the carbohydrates. But in the case of plants, this process is done due to the presence of chlorophylls which act as the photoreceptors. The two different types of chlorophylls which we have discussed, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, they are not absorbing around 500 to 600 range. Since they are not absorbing in the green region, they reflect green color. Chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, they are uh, forming a part of light harvesting antennae. Now just let us take a small example. If I am choosing a chlorophyll, once light falls on this chlorophyll, slowly it gets excited. As it is getting excited in the presence of a photon, it can act as a very powerful reducing agent. Since it is a powerful reducing agent, it gives off an electron which is taken up by some electron carriers and the excited chlorophyll loses an electron to convert into a cation. This cation will act as a powerful oxidizing agent. Since it is a powerful oxidizing agent, it requires electrons and this thirst for its electron will create a driving force to split the water molecule. A water molecule can split in the presence of an oxygen evolving complex which is a manganese complex. So the water molecule splits into protons, electrons and the oxygen where the electrons are taken up by the cationic chlorophyll which converts back into its normal state chlorophyll. This is how the cycle continues. I am just repeating this important point. These chlorophyll complexes upon excitation become very powerful reducing agents. As a reducing agent, it releases electrons which are taken up by some electron carriers where the chlorophyll is converting into a cation. 
and this cation is converted back into its normal position by taking the electrons which comes from the splitting of the water molecules in the presence of a manganese complex called as oxygen evolving complex. So this is a little introduction about the photosynthesis. Now also for the process of photosynthesis some energy is required. Once the process of photosynthesis start two NADPH are required to be produced. In the light reaction one of the end products is NADPH and two NADPH are required for the production of carbohydrates. For the production of one NADPH the free energy Gibbs free energy involved is about 219 219 kilojoules per mole and for the production of two NADPH it is 438 kilojoules per mole of energy is required. So for the production of 438 kilojoules per mole even if the photon comes from the blue part of the spectrum it is not sufficient for the production of 2 NADPH. It can produce only 1 NADPH but since 2 NADPH are required the energy is not sufficient. So what plants have done very intelligently is instead of taking up only one photosystem they have also taken up another photosystem which is called as a photosystem 2. So photosystem 1 and 2 they work in tandem they work in concert supporting one another and these two photosystems can produce the required energy of 438 kilojoules per mole. So for this reason we see a photosystem at P700 and also another photosystem at P680. The discussion of the photosystems will be given in my next video.